For starters, let's look at the program monitor that you're watching me on right now. I could move this to any panel group inside Premiere Pro by clicking it and dragging it to the middle of that panel group, or I could move it to any of the adjacent sides, top or bottom, by clicking and dragging it to any of those sides, top or bottom. Let's take this a step further and say we're working on a vertical video, and we want this whole program monitor to take up the entire side of our Premiere Pro window setup. It's very easy to do. We drag it over to one side, and instead of looking at the panels, now we get this kind of teal bar that takes up the entire side. You let go, and we have a vertical video all over on the side. Now you could do this with any type of window. So let's say I wanted to stack a bunch of windows over here. So I'm going to drag a bunch of different windows over here as an example. And then I can go to the hamburger menu of any of the windows in this panel group, go to panel group settings and hit stacked panel group. Now this panel group appears as a stack. Very convenient, right? Now, in some situations, instead of putting your windows as a part of groups or panels inside Premiere Pro, you might just want them to be standalone. And you can do that. Just click and drag them away from any of the panels of Premiere and release, and you have a standalone window. You can also achieve this by going to the menu of the window and clicking Undock Panel. If you do like what you've set up, then you'd wanna go up to Window, Workspaces, save as new workspace. Or if you want to reset back to a workspace that we had before, then you would hit reset workspace. There's also a convenient workspaces tab in the top right of Premiere Pro that you can use for a lot of these options as well. Now, here's a key though, or a keyboard shortcut. One of the things that I do a lot is reset my workspace. And as you can see on the monitor, if I hit shift option zero, it will reset the workspace. If you find yourself switching between workspaces for however you're working on a project at a given time, memorizing shift option zero is a good idea. And since we're talking about keyboard shortcuts and window layouts, let me give you three of the keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time. The first one is shift one. Well, shift one brings up your project menu or your project window. And this is probably the most important one because you need to pull your footage from there into your timeline in order to create your video. Now, one side tip here is with your project window, you may encounter something like this. Let's say you have a whole bunch of different bins like I do. I have one for sound effects, I click it. I have one for sequences, I click that, graphics, music, so on and so forth. And every single time I click one of these, it opens a new tab and you have all these different tabs. Now by hitting shift one, this will toggle between your different tabs inside the project window. But another way to tackle this challenge or issue, if you don't want all of these different bins open every single time, is to go up to your preferences. On Windows, this is in a different spot, but it's your settings and just go to general. And right here underneath the bins, those options are open new tab, open in place, and open new window for your bins. I could hold command and open it in place, or I can just change my double click to open in place. And I wanna show you what that looks like. Now, in order to showcase this correctly, I'm gonna go back over here to my project window and close other panels in group. That will get rid of all those other panels. Another thing you could do if you wanted to get rid of all of your panels at once is if you click this panel group settings and close panel group, this will close out everything. And that's another way to get some more real estate down here with just your timeline. But I wanna bring it back, so I'm gonna hit shift one. And now if I were to click on any bin, so if I wanna to go to my footage, I'll double click that. Notice that it just opens it in place. It doesn't create a new bin. If I wanna go back to my project in the hierarchy of my folders, I just click this button right here and that's one way to do it. And one more bonus bonus tip since we're talking about the project menu is sometimes you may want to bring something out like a sequence or a piece of footage out in the open like how I have these two sequences. Let's say I wanted to bring my 1920 by 1080 sequence out in the open. Sometimes you'll have a whole bunch of other things open and you don't want to click here and kind of like scroll all the way down and bring it down. Well, the easiest way to get it out in the open is to click the icon and bring it over here to the left in this little negative space that brings it to the left of all the carrot arrows. And once I release over here in this space, it puts it out in the open. So that's one quick way to bring files 
out into the open if there's something that you need to work on and you always wanna see it first in the hierarchy. The second one is hitting shift five to bring up your effects controls window. On top of bringing footage into your timeline, you're probably always manipulating that footage once it's on the timeline. And where you do that is in the effects controls window. And the third one is shift seven. That brings up the effects window. With most clips, you're probably adding some sort of effect. And when you want those effects, you wanna be able to access the window that shows you all of those effects, and that is Shift 7. So Shift 1, Shift 5, and Shift 7. I just keep repeating those so it gets into your brain. If you're not using them already, it will save you so much time. Another thing that could help here is if you want to make things just as big as they can go on the screen. And I'm not just talking about the program monitor and what you're viewing from the video, but maybe you have some nitty gritty work that you have to do inside the timeline. Well, if you highlight any window inside Premiere Pro and just hit the tilde key or the key that's to the left of the number one, it will make any window full screen. Now, on top of this, and this is a little bit easier inside Premiere Pro because they've added an icon on the top right. If you want to view your video in full screen, just click that icon and now I'm full screen. If you wanna get out of this, just hit escape. But a keyboard shortcut for that is control plus the tilde key, which now I'm full screen again. If I wanna get out of it, I'll just hit the escape key. And since we're talking about full screen, did you know that you can take whatever's on your program monitor, so what's ever being played on your timeline, and have it displayed on a secondary monitor? So I have my laptop over here, and I have my main monitor, so I want that to be displayed on here, full screen, while I'm playing back. For this, we need to go to the playback underneath settings, so I'll just click right there. And right here, the device name are my two monitors. So that second option is my laptop right there. I'm going to click that and I'll switch over here to my cell phone so you can see what happens. I hit OK and now what is on my program monitor is now on my laptop. I'll just hit spacebar so you can see that it is playing on both monitors. Just as simple as that. Now this next tip I have to give is a little bit more niche of an issue, but sometimes if you use a laptop and you shut it while you're using Premiere Pro and a second monitor, and then if you open that laptop up again, your windows may be off screen and you can't get them back onto the screen. One simple way to fix this that I've found is if you find a corner, you hold option and double click that corner. That will bring the window to the middle. There's some other tricks that you may be able to use if that one doesn't work. I did make a video on that topic. I'll link it here as well. One last thing I wanna talk about is once you get further along in your editing career, when you're more familiar with using Premiere Pro, you might not need as many windows on screen as you think. Some of those are pretty important ones like the toolbar and maybe the audio meters. So if you're doing a lot inside the timeline and you need all of that real estate on your monitor, sometimes I like to drag my toolbar and my audio meter into a panel group and then close out that entire group so it gets rid of those windows. If I ever need to bring them back, I just go back up to window and find the particular window. It's just some food for thought if you find yourself needing the most amount of real estate, especially with your timeline, if you want it to take up that whole strip of monitor, it does help sometimes to get rid of them. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. My name is Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.